everybody, this is Rick Bowen with Underwater Explorer. We're going to be diving Curacao today, and Curacao is part of the ABC Islands. That's Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao, and they're all about 30 miles north of Venezuela. Let's take a look. Curacao is really pristine diving. The visibility is anywhere from 100 to 120 feet, and right now we're about 60 feet deep. And we're right off a sloping wall that goes down about a 60% grade. Many tropical fish in this area, all very colorful. That's not a sea snake, although it looks like one. It's a type of eel. We saw several cruising around the reef that dive. And the soft corals are really beautiful. And you can get a pretty good idea of the visibility. And this fish is half asleep. This is a sea anemone, and those are quite rare in this type of uh, area. And that's a file fish, of course. They're very curious and follow us throughout the dives. And that's a little green moray eel peeking out. and another view of the sea anemone. These coral heads are really nice. And again, we're at about 60 feet of water and now we're coming back uh, to the resort. And we're right now between dives. And you can see on your left is remains of a volcano. And that's how, of course, these islands are formed. That's our dive guide for the day. And this is a new hotel just getting ready to open the next day. We stopped between dives for about an hour and before we go into our second dive of the day. And now we're going to our second dive. And the top part, it's about 85 to 88 degrees uh, this time of year. And there are all kinds of little beach parking places you can pull up to. There's great beach diving. Most times we're only about 50 to 100 feet offshore because the wall immediately goes down. That's one of several photographers we had on board that day. There's virtually no current on Curacao or there wasn't the week that we dove. And even if there is, of course, you dive uh, against the current when you're going, and then when you're coming back, you go with the current. It makes your exit a whole lot easier. Curacao doesn't have a lot of really big fish, but they've got tons of small fish from anywhere from six to 12 inches long. Now we're topside. We stayed at Lions Dive Resort in Curacao. Great resort, swimming pool for training divers, very tropical, palm trees all over the beach, and it had great beach diving too. You could uh, swim about 50 yards offshore and there would be a beautiful sloping coral reef, just like the one the charters go to. Had great breakfast, lunch, and dinner right there at the resort. You didn't really need to go anywhere if you didn't want to. And also has night diving at that same location we're looking at. And the beach is about 50 feet from the rooms. Usually we'd have two dives a day. We'd begin about 8.30 in the morning and we'd come back about 1 to 1 30 in the afternoon and then you could either do another beach dive if you wanted to or simply lay in the sun and the water even at the hotel is just crystal clear and these are the rooms in the resort and the resort itself is about 30 minutes from the airport so very close very easy access and this is right in the lobby of the resort Now we're on another dive. We're about 70 feet deep this time. 
the visibility is not quite as good. So that's why we go in close with the camera. What the dive plan is, we'd go to either 60 or 70 feet deep and we'd swim for about a third of what we had in our tanks and then we'd turn around and we'd come back and gradually you're coming up uh, all this time so you're uh, decompressing at the same time. That's again some blue soft coral. These blues were all over the reef. There's a certain time of fish that has just uh, perpetuated the area. It's called a lionfish, and it's not native to this area, and it's also uh, has appeared in the U.S. off West Palm Beach, and they're trying to eradicate it because it literally eats the other fish and takes over the reef eventually. Now we're back to great visibility in excess of over 100 feet. There's lots of little nooks and crannies and beautiful soft coral. This was probably the biggest school of fish that we saw the whole dive week. just covering the reef. Ideal conditions for photography. The sun was out most of the week. Hey, this is Rick Bowen. I want to recommend a book to you. It's called Unlimited Power. It's by Tony Robbins. You remember the guy that's about six foot seven on late night TV? It's a self-help book, but it really works uh, and helps you determine what it is that you really want in life, be it financial, travel, social. I'll never forget going to a UT football game years ago, and there was a guy that left me just going crazy after UT made a touchdown, score, interception, anything. Went nuts, and I said, uh, what do you do? He said, I work the plant. I, and he told me which one. I said, well, do you like it? And he said, I hate it. I said, wait a minute, you work eight or nine hours a day at a job that you hate? And I thought, my gosh, when it's time to change jobs is when you don't love what you do. Anyway, get this book. I think you'll like it. We're back topside at Curacao, and we're going around where the dive resort is, and this is a sea lion. And he was right in back of the resort in an aquarium and these guys seem to be about six feet and about 200 pounds or more. And there were probably about six of them. These are the dive boats. And we're on another dive, again, at about 60 feet deep. The dive guys are really great about noting your depth, how much ta tank area you've got left, and you always come back with at least 500 PSI. The guys are all very uh, certified, knowledgeable, and nobody's in a hurry. They emphasize to just slow everything down, enjoy the dives. That's our dive guy, and he's always turning around checking on us. That's brain coral. Again, here come the blues. They were all over the reef. If you'd like to enjoy diving, uh, you need to become a certified diver. You can do that at your local dive shop, which we're going to feature here in a little bit. That's a French angelfish. And we usually see about three or four of those every dive. Now that's fire coral, and that's what you want to avoid because you touch that and you'll know you've done it because it really burns. That again is more fire coral.
Notice his total neutral buoyancy. That's the way you want to be on every dive. You don't want to go up and you don't want to go down. You want to be totally neutral. Now we're working our way back up the reef. The depth here is about 50 feet. We're trying to make our ascent. And again, notice the great visibility. That day it was over 120 feet. And usually the dive profile I've noticed on both uh, Curacao and Bonaire, which is right next door. Uh, again, these are the ABC islands, Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao. Uh, the dive profile seem to be pretty much the same. Have a sloping reef down to about a depth of 130 feet. And many fish, although not many big. And you never see any sharks, oddly enough. Now this is more brain coral on your left. As far as the line fish are concerned, the way they spot them, the dive guides and any diver, they'll try to mark their hole or their spot with a piece of red tape. And uh, that was one right in that crevice. And they come back later and get rid of them. That's a great eating lobster. Although we're not gonna know that because the waters are protected. There's no spear fishing. I'm always amazed in these warm waters how many divers use wetsuits. Of course, there's more than one reason to use a wetsuit, not only for warmth, but for protection. Now we're in the Curacao Aquarium, and this is very much worth going to. And the wheel's trying to get in that pipe. And these are turtles, and have all kind of birds. These are small nurse sharks. And I think there were about 15 or 16 individual tanks with a, a fish that are from that area. Very much worth it, a sea anemone on your right. Now they also have a dolphin exhibit. And I think they have probably three to four shows a day. Hey, Curacao has some great beach diving also. Uh, at Lions Resort where we stayed, you can swim offshore about 50 yards and there's the reef about 20 feet below you and it slopes gently. And the visibility is crystal clear, 100, 150 feet of visibility. And you can dive there after the two tank morning dive, uh, late afternoon, or you can even do a night dive. So great diving, Curacao. Off to another dive again in about 70 feet of water. That was another day of great visibility. And that's more fire coral, and I can't emphasize enough that you definitely don't want to touch that. And that's part of a wreck that was in, that's about 50 feet of water. And more fire coral. This is an anchor from the same wreck. And we'll get some divers nearby so you can see just how big that anchor was. That's a huge propeller. Unfortunately, the wreck that came with that didn't make it in shallow water. And this is, of course, coming up, water on the lens. But you don't really have to touch your tanks if you don't want to. The staff uh, changes your regulator and your BC after every dive. A no hassle free dive zone.
This is probably the greatest visibility we had all week. These tube sponges were quite plentiful. And that's a wreck in about 60 feet of water. This is a puffer fish. He can blow himself up with water, make himself look bigger to an enemy. That's a sea anemone tucked in there. And again, a French angel fish. This is the feather duster. And that's gonna come up again in a minute. You'll see what happens when they disappear. Well camouflaged fish. Again, another foul fish. And now we're coming back from our dive and we're making our way toward the surface. We're in about 40 feet of water, gradually moving up. That's a basket sponge. And this is another feather fish. Watch what happens. Gone. This is a more brain coral. And another sea anemone. I've never seen so many uh, anemones on any reef before. Quite colorful soft corals. It's amazing how these dive guys know exactly how much air you've got in your tank. Of course, they've done so many dives. But they know just when to make the turnaround so that you'll have just enough air to get back. Again, that's another eel. And a good sized puffer fish. It's almost like he wants a self-portrait. These come in blues and purples and yellows. And this was the only other diver on the whole boat that did not use a wetsuit. I did not myself. It's just like bath water, 82 degrees. Now you'll get an idea of how the reef slopes. You want to really pay attention to the small stuff as a lot of times you focus on the bigger and you, you miss everything. And these guys just swoop down on the reef and constantly feeding on it. You could get as close as you wanted to and you would not interrupt them. The coral formations are quite prolific. Matter of fact, I've never seen that kind of coral before. That's, of course, brain coral. More feather fish. Now we're on top again, and this again is Lines Dive Resort in Curacao, and that's about 30 miles north of South America. Everything is close together on the resort. You don't really need to leave the area if you don't want to. There are two fine restaurants. And this is right next to the Curacao Aquarium. And the dive boats were great. There were three of them. 
all the room you could ever want. And now we're back to seeing some sea lions. And it just happened to be their lunchtime when we got there. And this is coming up to the approach of the aquarium. These flamingos were quite prolific. And that's a butterfly fish. And all he did from the time I was there was swim from one end of the tank to the other, just constantly back and forth. And this is a nurse shark that the uh, manager is trying to get uh, people to look at. Very shallow water. And this is, of course, a giant sea bass. These turtles were all shapes and sizes. And that's the staging place of the aquarium where they have shows two or three times a day uh, featuring the dolphins. And this happened to be their lunchtime. They even have a dive that you can dive with the dolphins. This is Ski and Scuba Center in Knoxville, Tennessee. Great place to get certified. They've even got their own pool in the dive shop. Great wetsuits, tanks, fins, mass snorkels, anything you could imagine. These are dive bags and BCs. Hello, welcome to Ski Scuba Center. Hopefully we can meet all your needs for your for diving and having fun. We offer training, we offer rental, we offer services, regulator service, we offer trips. So come by and see us and see if we can't help you out with anything. Hey, this is Rick Bowen. That's about it for diving Curacao. If you like warm water and great visibility, Curacao is where you want to be. Hey, this is Rick Bone with Underwater Explorer. I'm talking to Marshall Andy Smalls, who everybody knows in this region. And Andy's been very successful in what he's done over the years. Uh, Andy, what's your definition of success? Well, uh, I think probably two or three words could cover it. Uh, focus is one, one of the things. Have a dream. Stay with it. Don't give up. And I would say have that dream first. Focus and follow through. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I learned a lot from some people that I've had the pleasure to work with, Ted Turner, one of them, Ted Turner's father before that, and of course Jim Clayton was with him a while. And I noticed that the success, all those people are successful, aren't they? Right, very and much every so. every one of them, get an idea, zoom in on it, and focus, and they wear blinders. They don't let anything interfere with it. Right. I'm going to ask you about negative thinking, and I know you like to stay away from all negative type people. But let me ask you a question about a, a certain person that was very shy and took a certain course. Well, Rick, when I think about negative people, I, uh, a story comes to mind. And as you know, you know me, as you just said, I run from negative people. There's always someone out there that tells you it won't work. And they just have the greatest time in the world and sitting back and hoping that you fail. Those people you don't need to be near. This reminds me of a story. There was this guy who was a great salesman, the best they'd ever had in a company. One on one, he could sell anybody anything but he could not stand on his feet in front of a crowd. Every time they would go to a seminar and he was asked to get up and, and speak, he melted in front of the people. He couldn't say a word. He couldn't even introduce his wife at a function held by their company. So his boss said, well, look, the, the next time Dale Carnegie comes to town, let's sign this guy up and, and give him a Dale Carnegie course. Well, Dale Carnegie comes to town, they put him in the course. Nine weeks later, he was the guy that led the whole class. He was the absolute best. He was so good, in fact, they asked him if he would do the keynote speech for their awards banquet, which was given away at graduation from that uh, event. Well, he did. And he and his wife were up on the desk, and when he got up to talk, boy, he floored him. He absolutely knocked him dead. His wife was so proud, and everyone so proud. Well, on the way home, they started to cross the river bridge, and they looked up on top of the bridge, and there was a guy fixing to jump. 
And he said, oh man, I, I, that guy is negative. He has to be if he's going to jump. I can save him now. I know I can save him. So his wife says, well, don't leave him alone. Let the police handle this. He jumps out of the car, runs up on top of the bridge, and hollers at the guy, don't jump, don't jump. Just give me a few minutes. I'll be with you. And the guy says, I'm going to jump. You stay where you are. If you get any closer, I will jump. Well, he didn't take that. So he talks to him a little bit longer, and the guy's still sitting there. And he goes back to the car, takes his coat off, and his wife says, don't go up there. He takes his coat off, hands it to his wife, scales up the side of that bridge. And he got up there, and he sat down by this man. And 10 minutes later, they both jumped. <laughs> and that's what it takes. One negative person can take one down, or he can take a room full down. Show me one good salesman, or two, or five, and I can lock them up in a room right here in this city, in a motel overnight, and the next morning, I'll turn you out five or six negative people because it only takes one. And I know one man in this town I could put in that room and it would, that's all you'd need and it would all be negative the next morning. And I know you were uh, good friends with Eddie Arnold who uh, died uh, recently. Mm -hmm. What do you think his biggest uh, trend toward his success was? Well, I reckon a lot of people have a lot of reasons for being successful uh, besides the fact that people want to be, ambitious people want to be successful. But Eddie was driven. At age 11, he saw the county come in, take his father's belongings, auction off them on the courthouse steps along with the farm. One of his relatives bought the farm. He had to turn around and then go to work for his uncle and actually made a slave out of him. And he says, if I ever have anything ever, I will never be poor again because every penny I make, I'm going to save. And every time he had a hit record, he bought a farm. All right. Wow. And that's one of the reasons I think that he was driven to success. And he started out plus the fact that he was dedicated, a hard, hard worker, and his word was his bond. If he told you something, he stuck with it all the way. Right. And then finally, your last thought about achieving what you set out to achieve and what one of those keys is. Well, first of all, you've got to have a dream. You've got to, you've got to believe in something that you want to do. And I had a dream, as you know, from the time I was a kid. Right. And the thing that I've found out with a lot of people, that they don't understand it. You don't have to be asleep to dream. Right. You right. dream every day, and then you set out and you go after it. Right. Great. Right. Well, thanks for being with us, Marshall Andy. You're welcome. And this is going to wind up this week's show, and we'll see you next time on Underwater Explorer. You be there.